Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> um, welcome to Brit Hadashah, a, congrega- a Messianic Jewish congregation, a congregation of believers, of Jewish and Gentile believers, that we believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, seeking to make disciples in Memphis, in the state of Tennessee, and in the world for the kingdom of God. At Brit Hadashah, just to let you know that we believe that our tithes and offerings are an act of our worship. So at any time, you can put your tithes and offerings in the Sadaka boxes. We have two up here, one in the foyer and one in the fellowship hall in the overflow section. If you're joining with us online, you can do it um, online at Brit Hadashah. In the website, you can do it, put your tithes and offerings on rim, or you can send them in the mail. If you're a first-time visitor, you should have gotten a visitor packet. And if you're not, if you didn't and you're a first-time visitor, please raise your hand because we want to make sure we get you a packet. Inside the packet is a card, and if you would please fill that out and put it in one of our Sadaka boxes. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, tomorrow is our women's gathering at 1030 at Tim and Annette's house, and it'll be, we'll have lunch and fellowship by the pool. So dress accordingly, come dress very casually and um, for the weather. Uh, also, we want you to come because we want to start, I'll talk about some of the future events for the women's ministry coming up and just to get some great ideas and to fellowship with you ladies. Um, sign up on Realm or let Net and I know today so we can get a food count for that. Also, tomorrow or we'll have our youth game night. You'll, it'll be from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and if any of the parents or youth want to ask about it, talk to Alex and Devin Howard for that. We will be having a... Um, on August 1st, we'll be having a suicide prevention meeting. That's going to be at 4 o'clock. It's supposed to last about an hour. This is an introductory meeting. So if you have any, any interest or to understand this better, this would definitely be the meeting for you. So that's going to be on Sunday, August 1st, and we'd love to see you there. Just please join with me in a moment for um, a word of prayer. Our Father, our King, Avino Makeno, Father, we just love you. You are King. You reign You reign forever, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. We praise you today that better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, we lift this day up to you. We ask you to encounter us today. Encounter us right where we are, whether we came in with the cares of the world on our shoulder or came in leaping for joy, Father. Would you encounter us in this place, this place, meet us, to take us up with you to a new level, Father. So when we walk out of here, we we can say, We have been in the house of the Lord, and we have met the Lord. Father, I thank you for today, for today is the day of salvation, Lord. And would you minister to the hearts through the worship, through the Torah portions, through the drosh, the message, Lord. We thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua, amen. If you're not standing, will you rise with us for the Baruch Hu chant? Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamivor Baruch Hu Adonai Hamivor Meulam Bahayet Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity.
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hands, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So as you know, uh, Trey and uh, I had our opportunity to go to the Tikkun conference this year, and I was asked to MC this time, so I don't know if you knew that, but one of the nights I had the uh, privilege of uh, introducing Bart Rivka, who's here with us, so I want to say a welcome to Bart Rivka and her husband George, who are here. A warm welcome from Memphis to, bo to both of you. <laughs> but folks... Uh, this lady is an accomplished musician. She, she, we had a treat while we were in Maryland at the conference, and you guys are in for a, an incredible, joyous occasion as she leads us in worship. Just she is Israeli born. Uh, she is an accomplished musician, and a recording artist, and a worship leader. Uh, her unique sound is comprised of both original sounds, songs, and traditional Israeli melodies fused with powerful Mideastern vocals, clever lyrics, and rhythms from around the world. Her compelling music has impacted the nations through television, radio, and the distribution of her three CDs, along with performances and international conferences and outreaches across the globe. Some of her songs from her latest CD are currently playing on secular Israeli radio. She regularly gives free concerts at secular Israeli venues, and uses the opportunity to share the love of Yeshua and give away her CDs. Batrevka ministers uh, full-time with her husband, George. I will come and introduce him later. But again, a warm Memphis welcome to both of you. So we in invite you to, in to lead us in worship this morning. sounds so official. Um, well, praise the Lord. Shabbat Shalom. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to praise his name. Amen. Let's just go ahead and play a little bit of this. And um, I think that, uh, that you guys know this song, and I hope you'll follow along with me, but I felt like we need to start with uh, a song of unity. Israeli version, um, but this guy totally knew it, and by the way, he just learned like half of these songs this morning. <laughs> He's totally amazing. So we're just going to flow with the Ruach, Ruach Elohim, amen, and uh, the, the Spirit of God, and we're just going to worship Him. Hallelujah. Anybody? 
is toward him. Our heart calls for him. You are king, Lord. You are king. Pour out your spirit. And we will praise you and, uh, and give you thanks. Yud, hey, vav, hey. You know what that spells? It spells Adonai. Yud, hey, vav, hey. Some say Yehovah. Some say Yahweh. Yud, hey, Hashem Imloch Le'olam Va'ed. You guys know that, I hear. 
totally planning on coming in and doing my tracks this morning and um, my brother uh, I love you. Oh, there he, is. Um, he, he said we have this great piano player you should hear him and I'm always a little weary because he's good he could totally follow I'm telling you he just learned some of these songs it's unbelievable those songs I just sang were actually um, orthodox Lubavitch songs, and um, one day the Lord just kind of put it on my heart to learn some of them, and I mean, I knew them because everybody knew, knows them, but to really get to know them and start singing them because they're such full of life, these songs, some of them, and so, um, yeah, um, <clears throat> and so, but I like to do lots of American worship songs too. I grew up kind of half in Israel, half in America. My parents were born in Israel. My grandparents were born in Israel. My great grandparents helped build Israel. So my whole family's there. And um, when I was young, my parents divorced in Israel. I was born in Israel. My parents divorced. My mother moved to a kibbutz with me up north. And she remarried this guy who uh, she fell in love with. He was a hippie artist, American Jewish guy. And, uh, and then we went back to America with him. And so I call it my exile. I was here for like uh, it was 20 years or something. So that's why I speak English like I do. Uh, but later I met and married my wonderful husband and we moved back to Israel. I actually moved back there way before I met him, but uh, the Lord just orchestrated this meeting between him and I. But I was, as soon as I became a believer, that's one thing I'm so 
grateful for America is that uh, I was led to the Lord through some people who prayed for me and didn't stop praying. How many people are like waiting for somebody to come to the Lord? You've been praying for a long time. Please don't stop. This guy prayed for me for three years and I prayed for my father for 25. So, and, and both my parents came to the Lord, which is amazing. Not, not many Jewish people have that story. So I'm just so grateful to the Lord for his uh, mercy because he had a lot of mercy on me. And he can make a way for you and for your people to come to the Lord too because he wants them to. He wants us to know him. It's like, you know, an orphan child always wants to know their father, their, their parents, it's like the same thing. You know, we're all these orphan kids and we need to know our father. Amen. Yeah. So he can do it. He can do it. Oh, yeah.
You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Oh. creator of the universe lets us be part of his plan, his great plan, that we don't, sometimes we think we know how it's supposed to go, but despite that, he has a plan and a purpose for each person here, so I thank you, Abba, for what you're going to do in Yeshua's name. What's the, uh, sorry, what's the time? Like, I mean, I know the time, but when do I, when am I? <laughs> when do you want me to get, be done? What? Do you have a, t a, a thing? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's like, just worship it. Just let me laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Good for you. Good for you, brother. Whew. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm just so thankful for freedom today. Freedom. Thank 
not ours. It's not us. We're not in charge. God, we give you all our need for control this morning. All our need for understanding with our own mind the situations, Lord, that we have going on. We give it all to you. All of it this morning is yours. The kingdom is yours. Yes,
bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. This is what this song's about. I mean, all of heaven is around the throne. All the angels. And it, it, it's amazing to me, you know, how much more should that be us here on earth? If all of heaven is focused on the throne, how much should we be focused on the throne, day and night, and night and day, and day and night.
Adonai Hamborach Leolam Baez. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Baez. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachar Panu Mikol Hamim. Venatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten Torah. Amen. Amen. Fortunately, Jeff's voice is quite loud enough. I don't know about yours. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is not. Um, I finally... Uh, this week's parasha is from Devarim, chapter 1, verses 41 through 43. Vatanau vetoremu elai chatanu la Adonai anachnu neele vanilchamnu 
ככל אשר ציוונו אדוני אלוהינו. ותחגנו ותגרו איש את גלי מל, מלחמתו, ותעבדו לעלות אהרה. ויאמר אדוני אלי, אמור להם, לא תעלו ולא תילחמו, תילחמו כי אינני בקיר בכם, ולא תנגפו לפני אויביכם. ואדבר עליכם, ולא שמעתם, ותאמרו את פי אדוני, ותזידו, ותעלו אחרה. אמן. Today's Torah reading is Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 41 to 45. Then you answered and said to me, We have sinned against Adonai. We will go up and fight, just as Adonai our God commanded us. So each of you strapped on his weapons of war, figuring it was easy to go up to the hill country. But Adonai said to me, tell them, do not go up and fight, for I am not with you, and you will be defeated by your enemies. So I told you, but you would not listen. You rebelled against the command of Adonai and presumptuously went up into the hill country. The Amorites who lived in that hill country came out against you, and they chased you as bees do, and scattered you from Seir to Hormah. Then you returned and wept before Adonai. But Adonai did not listen to your voice or pay attention to you. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu torat emet, v'chaye olam nata betolcheinu, baruch ata Adonai, notein ha-Torah, amen. Please rise. Vizod HaTorah, Asher Samoshe, Lifnei Bnei Yisrael, Al Pi Adonai, Pi Ad Moshe. Barchi Nafshi, Barchi Nafshi et Adonai, Bachi nafshi, Bachi nafshi et Adonai, Adonai Eloho hagedal tamahol, O te hadar levashta, O te ukasalma, no te shamayim kariya Bachi nafshi, Bachi nafshi et Adonai Bachi nafshi, Bachi nafshi et Adonai and please be seated. Today's, today's Haftarah reading is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. Wash 
and make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, says Adonai. Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they will become like wool. If you are willing and obey, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. Today's Bessarah reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 9 through 14. Then they will hand you over to persecution and will kill you. You will be hated by all the nations because of my name. And then many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray because lawlessness will multiply the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom shall be proclaimed in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Shabbat Shalom. Has this not been just a wonderful time of worship this morning? And I don't think it's uh, overstating the fact that uh, where else would you rather be this morning than in, in the house of the Lord? Well, Shabbat Shalom and uh, a little drosh from uh, this week's parasha. We begin the book of Devarim or Deuteronomy. And, uh, you know, in the Greek, they translate this Deuteronomy as the second law. But in the Hebrew, it's Ale Hadvarim, that's more accurate, means these are the words, because it's Moses. Moses speaking directly in his own words to all of B'nai Yisrael in his final weeks before his death. He's speaking to the generation that is about to enter and take possession of the promised land. He's recounting, especially in this first parasha, many of the sins of the previous generation. For that generation, they wandered and they died in the wilderness except for Joshua and Caleb. And they never entered the land that had been given to them by Adonai earlier in when you're reading through Torah. So the, the sins of that generation were many. Fear, complaining, unbelief, Rebellion, complaining, idolatry, injustice, fornication, complaining, disobedience, selfishness. Oh, and did I mention complaining? So it's important to Moses here to recount to this next generation where they are, how they got there, and where they are headed to renew the, the covenant of Sinai with Adonai to exhort the people to Yahafta Eid Adonai El Hecha to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your strength, and to keep all his commandments and to avoid sinful behavior. And when sin enters into your life or into your community, to repent quickly. You know, recently, uh, some of you know I had cataract surgery on one of my eyes. And 
hopefully I'll get the other eye uh, done very soon. And I know a lot of you are sitting there thinking, you didn't know that cataracts could affect someone so young. <laughs> Thank you very much. You, you, you flatter me. But I'm not. Don't mock me. You know, cataracts are they're interesting because they, they're, they're one of these slow-growing type of conditions. Our vision changes. They're subtle but progressive. Uh, you start feeling less sure of yourself at uh, nighttime driving. The TV images begin to blur a little bit. You're, you're continually trying to find this, this right, perfect distance that you can read at when you whether you're reading a, a book or a paper or the Bible. And then eventually, the good news is you fail an eye exam, which then qualifies you to have cataract surgery. And then it's time to remove this, this filmy, invasive tissue that's covering your lens, and you get, uh, you get that taken out, and you get a new artificial lens. And a few days later, the whole world begins to look brighter and more vibrant, just like Brit Hadashah is vibrant, right? I know you get tired of hearing that, but so be it. So what's my point? My point is that, that sin is often very subtle and slow. It, at first it seems even appealing and harmless, but over time it can consume us. And it can be remo- rooted in, I thought of four, four Ds. It, can be rooted in distraction, deception, disappointment, or disaffection. Distractions, think, things that take us away from godly pursuits. Uh, binge watching, uh, uh, hooked on social media and the fascination of it. Uh, deception, we, we persuasive arguments or writings or teachers that run counter to orthodox teaching, and scriptural foundational principles. Disappointments, uh, failure to be recognized, not getting that job or promotion, uh, lack of our dreams being fulfilled or or having the resources to achieve those dreams, or disaffection, struggles in our marriages, criticism of managers or bosses or leaders in our community or in the congregation, and just a lot of complaining about other people in general. And so I say to Bert Hadashah this morning, beware. Beware of the, the kudzu in our lives that may be slowly growing and strangling us and leading us from Yeshua, leading us from our first love. And, and I'm speaking to myself, folks, when, I, when I'm saying these things. You know, back in Devarim, Moses is warning the next generation. He's exhorting them to not fall into these sinful patterns of, of attitudes and behaviors that condemn that previous generation. They, these were the people who had seen the miracles of freedom from bondage in Egypt. They'd seen the parting of the Red Sea. They had seen and... Um, enjoyed the manna and even the quail. And those people were condemned. And so, so I say to myself and I, and I say to you, let's not fall prey to sinful patterns that separate us from a loving God who only desires to give good gifts to his people. And so here's the good news, and that I found it in this week's uh, Haftor portion, Isaiah chapter 1, and we read it. I'll just read it again because it's good. Come now and let us reason together, Isaiah 1, 18. Come let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Yeshua paid the price for our sins, past, present, and future. His blood is our atonement. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And though I have, and I will, like it or not, 
sin, even in the process of walking out my faith, in the process of sanctification, and being conformed to the image of Messiah, His blood on the cross covers the multitude of my sins, and in that I can rejoice. And so I'm reminded, finally, of, of 1 John 1, 9. This gives me great hope. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But don't forget the next verse. For if we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the center of His will. Center of His will for my life, day by day by day. Don't you? So let's all seek His kingdom first and His righteousness. Let's not be like that older generation that missed the opportunity to receive all the blessings that Adonai had promised B'nai Yisrael from the time of the patriarchs. Shabbat Shalom. Let's all rise as we return the, the scroll to the ark. Eitz kayim hi l'machazikim ba v'tom cheha mehusha derachcheha darchei noam v'kol nativotea shalom. Ashivenu Adonai Elecha v'na shuvah Chadesh, Chadesh amenu Chadesh amenu it is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew, renew our days, renew our days as of old. Amen. Closing blessing, may he who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, bless Alan and Les, Jeff, Taylor, and Trey, who have come up to honor God and the Torah. May the Holy One, blessed be he, bless you and your families, and send blessing and prosperity on all of the works of your hands. May the Lord also bless each person for honoring his word through the reading of the Haftarah and Brit Hadashah portions, and for faithfully serving the congregation this day. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as John comes. What a wonderful time of praise we had with that beautiful music. And I'm sure we'll get maybe one, one more after the message is over. I want to now uh, introduce George Witten. He's the founder and director of a leading pro-Israel Christian news website. Uh, and he's a man of a lot of information from our conversation yesterday over dinner. He has a lot of information. Uh, the worthy brief... Uh, the website is called worthynews.com, right? And Worthy Brief is a devotional news brief with a readership of over 25,000, correct? Wow, a day. It focuses on Israel, persecution, prophecy, outreach, and discipleship. And Worthy News has reached millions in over 120 countries since 1999. George is a visionary, a journalist, an astute observer, and an advocate for Israel. He brings a fresh, insightful perspective on current events in the Middle East, giving balanced viewpoints on both the political and spiritual atmosphere in the land. 
Married for 17 years, George and Rivka Bhatt, along with their two children, Eliana and Obadiah, hold regular Shabbat dinners, music outreaches from their home in southern Israel, making a huge meal and inviting the community. Many Israelis have come to know the Lord through this ministry and continue to come weekly. Together, the Witten family has also ministered at, the, at hundreds of conferences, congregations, and convocations. So I would like to invite George. Can I say a quick prayer for you before you start? Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name, O oh God. Thank you that you could bring George and Bart Rivka here, O oh God, to minister to us. Now, O oh God, I pray for your anointing upon, upon George as he speaks to us. <sighs> holy Spirit, use him mightily for your glory, that we could lift up Yeshua in everything we say and do. Circumcise our hearts and our ears as we hear what you have to tell us. May we will give you the praise in Yeshua's name. Amen. Well, that was almost perfect. Uh, we've been married 19 years. I guess my wife was only counting the good ones. <laughs> um, so my name is George Witten. I, I'm originally from Baltimore. I got radically saved in uh, 1996. I was used to be a grateful deadhead. Uh, and a long story short, I, I had the heart for Israel because I realized it was key to revival. So I started a site called Worthy News. Worthy News was found on the verse, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, and may be found worthy to escape these things. The first portion of that is about being a watchman. The ancient Hebrew word for watchman is no stream. It's a modern Hebrew word for Christian, a modern Hebrew word for believer. And so we're all called to be watchmen, but if you don't know what's really happening in the world, how can you effectively pray? We have a media that has become the enemy of the people. We have to realize that, um, you know, truth, look, we live by a different commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. I don't know when this got thrown out the window. Truth matters. And so we go ahead, and I literally read about 3,000 headlines a day, and I go out and I put together what's happening around the world, what's happening in Israel, what's happening in the United States, and what's happening to believers. And then finally, we want everyone to get prepared because the Lord is coming really, really soon. In order to talk about prophecy, I have to give everyone to understand where I'm coming from. So I'm going to kind of give you a, a lowdown. Um, when Yeshua came, he said, I've come to preach this message of what? The kingdom. And it was for this purpose I've been sent. It was the message of the kingdom. The beginning of Acts, when he was presenting himself alive for 40 days. What was he doing for 40 days? He was presenting the kingdom. Right? The very last verse of Acts is Paul proclaiming the kingdom. If the beginning and the end of Acts is about the kingdom, and Yeshua's main purpose was preaching the kingdom, and we're disciples of Yeshua, then that's got to be our purpose, okay? The purpose of Yeshua was the, the message of the kingdom always began with the, with the word repent. Repent, therefore. Repent means you're going one way. It's not the right way. You turn and you start going the right way, right? Well, here is the repentance unto God. When you realize you cannot save yourself, that you need a Savior, and you say, I'm turning to you, that's when your sins get blotted out. That's when you're birthed into the kingdom, okay? Now, there's that one understanding where you, you're, you're birthed into the kingdom. Then there's an understanding of actually walking a lifestyle of repentance. I believe this is so lost, because if you continue reading this, that there may come seasons of refreshing. That word refreshing is fresh breath. Now, I don't live in a lifestyle of repentance to stay saved. I know the day I got birthed into the kingdom. However, can we not be better husbands? Can we not be better wives? Can we not be better friends? The reality is if we're not doing a check within ourselves on a daily basis and asking the Spirit of God to search us and to know us, then we become stagnant in our walk. We're actually walking backwards. The reality is that repentance is not a bad word. Somehow or another, it became a bad word. It is actually the key word, not only for revival, but the re for the restoration. See, if you continue reading, it says that heaven may send you the Mashiach, who's appointed to be even Yeshua, whom heaven must receive until what? The times of the restoration of all things. The work of God is actually restoring everything back to Genesis. What's interesting here is where God spoke of by the mouth of the holy prophets, when Yeshua and the apostles taught the message of the kingdom, 
there wasn't a Brit Hadashah. There wasn't a New Testament. Where did they teach the message of the kingdom from? It was from the Tanakh. That is why it's important to actually study, right, the end from the beginning, because you'll, you'll, you'll know this. In, in this passage here, Yeshua says to them, I surely I say to you, in the regeneration, that word regeneration is a very unique uh, Greek phrase. It's palin genesia. Palin means return to genesia is Genesis. Return to Genesis, right? If you really want to understand a revelation, you have to actually realize that the end is actually known from what? The beginning, right? So I'm going to kind of go through this. Well, in Isaiah 11, 6, right? The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the young lion, right? The lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. A little child shall lead them. What is this talking about? It's talking about the restoration of the animal kingdom. Everything that was lost in the garden is actually coming back. I, I, I know this is a crazy concept, right? But can you imagine having a service and a lion walking through the middle of your service? Or an elephant? You know, I have a little dog. Um, actually, it's really a rat. The only reason why it's called a dog is because it's got a wagging tail. My, my wife won't let me get a real dog. A real dog is like Rottweiler size. I have a, 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 a rat. My dog jumps on my bed all the time. My wife is always saying, get the dog off the bed. I don't want his dirty paws on the bed. I said, in the kingdom, honey, you're going to have to worry about our lions and tigers. It is a different world. There's some people that say that we're in the kingdom now. Partially that's true. If you're born again, the kingdom of God is within you. However, every day we pray that will be done, that kingdom come. We're not in the kingdom yet. For anyone that argues with you, says we're in the kingdom now, just say, go to the zoo, jump into the lion's cage. They will be in the kingdom today. Anyway, <laughs> he's very, very happy about being a... In Zephaniah 3, 9, then I will turn to the people as a pure language, and they shall call upon the name of Jehovah with one consent. What are we in Genesis? It was at Babel that the languages got dispersed. What do we read in Revelation? Revelation 17, 18, the destruction of Babylon. When the Lord comes back and is preaching the Torah from Jerusalem, do you suppose that's going to be in all different languages? Do you think there's headsets? Actually, we're going back. We're actually all going to know Hebrew fluently. We're, we're, we're going to have this different world. Everyone will understand one another. I look forward to this day. I've been married 19 years. My wife will finally understand me. Anyway, Revelation 5, 9, right? Worthy you to take the scroll and open seals from your saying, from by your blood, your ransom people from God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. When we talk about the restoration of all things, God is at work trying to restore people from everywhere. And in the kingdom, there is no such thing as racism. The reality is that when we don't step into pockets of, of, of preaching the kingdom, the enemy will go ahead and hijack things. We have a situation now that God is at work trying to redeem people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. And you've made them a kingdom and priests are God, and they shall reign in heaven. Not yet. They shall reign on the earth. What is happening? In Genesis, we read that God gave Adam dominion over the earth. When the Lord comes back and rules and reigns for a thousand years, we're ruling and reigning with him on the earth. You know, the, the new Jerusalem isn't for a little while. I mean, it's a, it's a different, if you don't understand, see, if you understand the plan of God, God's trying to restore everything that was lost at the garden, and it's coming back, and the Lord is ruling, and we're ruling and reigning with him. He's called us to be a kingdom of priests and God, priests to God. When you realize that in Exodus, God told, Moses told the, the children of Israel, you're going to be to me a kingdom of priests, that has now been relegated over through the Jewish Messiah. They were all called to be part of this royal priesthood that we were once not one of god's people but now we're, we're god's people 
So God is redeeming people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. And he's called us to live a holy and a righteous life. We're called to be a peculiar people. It's okay. Now, if God's at work redeeming people from every nation, tribe, and tongue, then you have to realize that God doesn't replace anyone. That God is at work restoring everyone. Okay? And what we read in Ephesians is that the Gentiles were once separated, alienated from all the promises of God, separated from all the commonwealth of Israel, that God is working at restoring them back into a place of, of promise that through the Messiah, he's broken down the wall between the two, that he might create himself one new man in place of the two, that they're no longer strangers and aliens, but now fellow citizens. That God's at work, he doesn't replace anyone, he's restoring everyone into a place of promise. And then you continue reading chapter 3, this mystery that was made known, was not made known to all the generations before Paul. And this, and this revelation is what? That the Gentiles are soul heirs, no, fellow heirs. Who did they join? They joined with the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as fellow heirs, right, that, that this mystery was made hidden in ages before God. Ready for this? The revelation was so great, even the angels didn't understand how great the plan of God was. I mean, I think about that. Through the church, the manifold wisdom of God may be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places. The angels didn't understand how great the plan of God was. So we should have a little bit of grace and mercy for our brothers and sisters in the faith that don't quite understand this yet. I mean, think about this. It's a great revelation. Now, if God's at work restoring people from every nation, tribe, and tongue into the place of promise, doesn't it make sense he's got a plan for Israel, right? I mean, we're, Lord, we this time restore the kingdom to Israel. So we know that blindness has happened in part until what? So the fullness of the nations comes in. And then it says something interesting, and then so shall all of Israel be saved. So people ask, well, how does national redemption take place? Well, Zechariah 12, whoops, and I, Right, will pour upon the habits of, and the, whoops, upon the the house of David and upon the habits of Jerusalem. Sounds like Jewish people, right? The spirit of grace and supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they pierced. That sounds like Yeshua. If you had a vision of Yeshua, how could you not believe? That is what, that's how national redemption takes place. But until then, we're actually in the middle of a prophecy. We're seeing the, bowl, the bones come together. This is the, the mystery of the, of the valley of dry bones. The Jewish people lost and scattered for 2,000 years start coming back to life. Bone to bone, flesh upon them. But notice this last phrase, but there was no ruach in them. That the Spirit of God, so he talks about the physical restoration before the spiritual restoration. For those that say that the Jewish people back to the land is the restoration of Israel, no, it is not. The restoration of Israel won't be completed until verse 14. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. That is the restoration of Israel. There's a great many people that say, well, look, the Jewish people, they got another way into the kingdom. I want to explain something. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There wasn't a Gentile in that audience. And Paul's heart, his heart was so great, he said, look, I wish I myself could be accursed that my brethren could be saved. That was his passion. And so now we know, ready, that if their trespasses, right, means riches for the world and their failure rich for the Gentiles, basically saying, look, if the Jewish people had rejected the Messiah, to open up the door for the Gentiles. Then he says something interesting. How much more will their full inclusion mean? What happens when they do believe? See, that's what Spurgeon started talking about. He said, look, these people that were the first missionaries, the first apostles to us who are far they're going to be regathered in again. And you've got to understand that your glory is not going to happen until this happens. 
that there's great benefits, matchless benefits you cannot even begin to understand until they come into the kingdom. So we are at work in Israel seeing the national redemption of Israel, but their national redemption will not be complete until they're spiritually redeemed. That's why we face the persecution that we face. I mean, we've been in Israel for almost 20 years. We've had multiple tires on t- cars been slashed, multiple times of people getting right, right in my face, spitting on me, screaming at me. It's life. The very sad thing is, that is sometimes when it happens, I just start laughing. And I can't help but laugh because in my mind it said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. I don't know what that means. So then I, then I stir up more trouble than it's worth. But anyway, if the rejection means reconciliation world, what would their acceptance mean but life from the dead? Right? That's what we're waiting for. So in a nutshell, my theology is simply this, that God is at work trying to redeem people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. He sent his Messiah. And that through the repentance of sin, you can have salvation today. And that now God is at work pouring out his spirit to redeem people. That God has a plan and is restoring everything that was lost to the garden. Okay? Now I'm going to talk about prophecy, but see, prophecy is not doom and gloom. It's for upbuilding, encouragement, and comfort. It's not meant to freak you out. It is not the end of the world. It's the beginning of the kingdom. And right now, we're experiencing the birth pangs of the kingdom. And the birth pangs, you know, I always find it interesting, right? Um, any, anyone that's given birth in this room, right? Okay, I'm glad no men raised their hands. They've given birth in this room, right? They're not saying, look, I would like to take a really long time to give birth. I like to give birth for like weeks on end. I would like to prolong the pain because I really enjoy it. No, you're like, once once a woman has had the first baby, the second baby comes out so much faster. They're like, get this thing out of me. If we really understand what God is at work, God's trying to, you know, we're trying to usher in a kingdom. It's going to happen by what we do, by how we share. Because this gospel has got to be preached to the ends of the world. Then the end shall come. And right now we're in these birth pangs, and when you're in a birth pang, sometimes you get a little disillusioned because we're, we're actually in the middle of prophecy being unveiled even now. For example, if I told you 25 years ago it was going to be like the days of Lot's, you didn't have a concept that we we're going to redefine marriage, right? Now, this has been, this is a changed understanding. If I told you it was going to be the age of lawlessness, only now, are we, are we really talking about defunding the police department, right? If I told you it was going to be the age of pestilence, you didn't think you were going to be wearing, you know, masks. You didn't think we were going to have this kind of chaos, See, we're actually in the middle of the birth pangs and we're experiencing things that the Bible talks about and Daniel says it's sealed until the time of the end. And sometimes it's a little tricky living this life. But I really believe what COVID has done is take us out of our comfort zones. And it's really trying to teach us how to hear from him. We're going to see wars and rumors of wars, right? And then the Lord says, look, do not be troubled. If you're freaking out, guess what? You're sinning. Stop. There's been a lot of things that have taken place this week. I mean, there are mass protests in Greece, in Australia, in Ireland, in Paris, uh, in South Africa. I mean, it was all over. In Cuba, thank you. It was a crazy week this week. That's the birth pangs. And what we're experiencing now, you're going to see these wars and rumors of wars. These things might come to pass. Must. Okay? Now, I'm going to talk uh, specifically about what I think is getting ready to take place in the very, very near future. And the reason why is because there are so many events happening prophetically concerning Iran and Israel. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. You know, we, we live in this tiny little nation We're surrounded by like 500 million Muslims that love us. 
to death. You didn't let me finish, to death. But I want you to understand, if you are pro-Israel, right, that doesn't mean we're anti-anyone. I mean, you have to understand that guys that work, look, and it talks about a highway being established from Egypt to Assyria. In that day, Israel will be a third with Egypt and Assyria in the midst of the, in a blessing land. Blessed is my people Egypt and Assyria the work of my hands and Israel my inheritance. You have to understand that God is pro-Egyptian. He's pro-Ishmaelite. He's pro-Iranian. He's pro-Indian. God is for all. He's trying to redeem people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. And sometimes you get in this mindset, if you're, if you're pro-Israel, you must be anti. I am absolutely not. You have to understand that God has got a plan to restore the sons of Ishmael. I don't have time to get into that because I'm going to really focus on Iran. Now, in the Bible, you won't find the word Iran, but you do find this word Elam. Okay? So this, this orange area was the Elamite kingdom, and it's actually inside the modern state of Iran. Right? In the Bible, it talks about this time. And talks about, I will break the bow of Elam, the main city of Elam. I will bring upon Elam the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. And I will scatter them. It talks about a mass dispersion of Elamites. Well, that's modern day Iran. Okay? The, po the Policy Migration Institute talked about a mass diaspora of Iranians. It actually happened in 1978, 1979, that because of the Islamic uh, theocracy that was established, millions of Iranians fled. As a matter of fact, this week, there was a mass protest of Iranians through every Iranian embassy around the world protesting against the Islamic regime. Okay? So now we're getting a little bit of prophecy here. I will terrify Elam before their enemies and before those that seek light. I will bring disaster upon them, my fierce anger, until I consume them. Now, if you stop there, you would say, that's a war coming, but then you wouldn't understand the purpose of the war. Now look, watch this closely here. I will set up my throne in Elam. What? God is trying to set up a throne here in Memphis. Did you know that? God's trying to set up a throne in Nashville. God's trying to set up a throne all across the world because the earth and all that are in is his. And here he says, look, I'm going to set up my throne in Elam. I'm going to destroy their kings and their officials. This is how we know it's for us. In the latter days, see, that word latter days is literally akarit hayimim in Hebrew. It's the end of the end of days. This particular passage is used throughout Scripture talking about the redemption of Israel coming back to the land. It's used talking about the Messiah preaching the word from Jerusalem in Isaiah 2 from the, from the, from the temple of the Lord that when it's going to be established. It's used in the Gog Magog war. It's used here. And I'm going to destroy Iran. He doesn't say that. He's not trying to destroy anyone. He's trying to restore them. You understand? See, right now there's actually a huge revival taking place in Iran. There was 100,000 believers in 1994. Now there's over 3 million believers. Okay? There's a mass move of God happening right now. And if you don't understand everything that's happening, you're going to get lost in this because I really believe what the, what the media does is actually creates in us wrong attitudes about prayer. I believe what's, what's happening is, is really a Jonah complex that takes place. Now, you're going to ask me, what's a Jonah complex? Okay. I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of Jonah so that you can understand. Now, Jonah was living during the Assyrian Empire, right? So he's living during the times when the biggest terrorists were occupying the world. Now, ready? The terrorists were the Assyrians. The Assyrians were the ones that came up with the idea of crucifixion. They found a, a problem person in your congregation. You know, they would take John Matthew, put him up here on a cross, you know. They'd throw him up here to make you all submit. They would find the leaders of towns, throw them up on a cross to get everyone to submit. Now, Jonah is a prophet, so he probably went to the school of prophets. Probably people that he talked to were, you know, officials. The way they would subjugate their their congregations or their towns, or they would find the mayors. They would find the synagogue leaders. They would find the prophets. So when Jonah is told by God, you need to go to Nineveh, God, he's probably, these people are terrorists. I mean, you're, you're asking me, you're probably sending me my death. 
right? The next thing is this, right? That it was during the Assyrian Empire that we had the 10 lost tribes of Israel. What happened was the Assyrians, the empire went from Egypt all the way to India. It was this vast empire. And how could you conquer? How could you hold this vast area? So they came over with a really ingenious plan. They actually picked up towns. They picked up a town in, in, in the Galilee, put it into Iran, picked up a town in Iran, put it into the Galilee, picked up another town, put it into Syria, picked up a Syrian town, put it in the Galilee. All of a sudden, by the time the Yeshua comes, there are so few indigenous Jews left. The rabbi said, what good thing could come out of the Galilee? Why? Because it was full of pagans. Okay? So here is Jonah. He's probably saying to himself, God, they brought all these pagan idols to the land. They've defiled the land. Worse than that, God, they've taken us out of the promises you've given us. And they've moved us out of the land that you've given to us. There's a lot of things at work. And so now here is Jonah. He's probably thinking to himself, God, what do you want me to do here? When, when Yeshua comes and he says, no good thing could come out of the Galilee, that's because it was so, they were at odds with one another. See, the Assyrians came up with this really thought-provoking idea. It, it, let's say in the Galilee there was a million people. Well, it's very hard to control a million people, but let's say we had five different groups of people that all didn't get along. They would be actually at civil war with one another so much, they wouldn't fight us. That's what's happened inside the body of Messiah. The enemy has every congregation pitted against one another, forgetting that the real enemy is, the, is Hasatan. Okay? So here is Yeshua, and he comes in, and he casts out the demoniac, and it goes into a, a, a legion of swine. Where do you think that pig farmer came from? Do you really think that's a Jewish farmer? Just saying. Now, if you get swallowed up by a great fish, now, because Jonah's taking this thing, he's like, you know, God says, go east. Now, he's trying to go east, and he goes, no, no, I'm going to go west. If you know where Tarshish is, it's Spain. You can't get further west. God says, I'm going, I'm running. Now, if you had gotten swallowed up by a great fish, and you were inside three days and three nights, you'd have an attitude adjustment too. So Jonah goes to Nineveh. The crazy thing is he goes to Nineveh, he preaches the word, he probably thinks he's going to die. They repent. He has the greatest revival known to man in the Old Testament, and his thought is, God, it's better for me to die than to live. Jonah's hatred was greater than his understanding of God's love for them. So here was the situation. Should I not pity Nineveh, that great city? They don't know the right hand from the left. See, we're actually at a spiritual war. We're going to go from the, Daniel said, from the first day that you, you, from the first day you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, this is Daniel, and here's Gabriel giving him the message. Gabriel's giving a message, and a very interesting thing happens, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, that included ancient Iran. There was a principality over Persia. It was fighting Gabriel until Michael the archangel, that's, that's the archangel that watches the Jewish people, comes in a system. That battle continues for 21 days. But notice this. This is to help you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. What will happen to your people in the end of the end of days? See, we're at a situation right now. We're getting ready to enter into what's called Tishbah. Not only is it Tishbah, for those that don't know Tishbah, it's the day the spies came back and gave a bad report of the land. That same day, the first temple was destroyed. The second temple was destroyed. The Jews were expelled out of France. The Jews were expelled out of Spain. The Jews were expelled out of Great Britain. The call for the final solution on Tishbav. This is why the Jewish people fast in, on Tishbav. And we just celebrated the 40-year anniversary of when Israel 
struck the nuclear reactor in Iraq. And there's been an ongoing war right now with Iran. And right now, Iran is at a very fragile state. They've just started chanting for the first time, death to Khomeini. Why? Because their electricity is going. They only have like two or three hours of electricity at night. They're having issues with water right now. The same thing is happening in Lebanon. Lebanon's government completely collapsed. Who, where's Lebanon? Well, Lebanon is where Hezbollah is. That's the right hand of, of Iran. Israel may be looking at this situation, saying to itself, we have an opportunity to take them out. In, in 1980, 1981 rather, when they struck the Iraq, when they struck the nuclear reactor in Iraq, they didn't ask Ronald Reagan for permission. If you actually read Ronald Reagan's diary, he was caught by surprise. They just had, they went ahead and did and asked forgiveness later. I believe we could be coming to that point in the very near future. Because from a strategic point of mind, you would want to go ahead and make war with an enemy that can't even turn on its lights. The thing is, if you get caught in the mindset, God, you need to wipe them out. They call for the death of Israel. They call for the annihilation of Israel. They're burning the U.S. flag, death to America. You may not even realize that you are developed the Jonah complex. You know, when, when, when Peter and, I mean, or James and John walked through Samaria, Samaria, hey, where did all these villagers come from? That was from the Assyrian Empire. They walked through, they're not accepted. They said to Yeshua, should we not call down fire from heaven and destroy them? And Yeshua turned and rebuked them and said, you don't know what spirit you're speaking of. If we don't understand God's plan of the kingdom and God's trying to redeem people from every nation, tribe, and tongue, you understand that God uses wars and rumors of wars to redeem people, you may look at these things and be freaked out, but what I'm trying to give you is a prophetic understanding of where we are so you can prophetically fulfill your calling to pray into the revival coming in Iran, the revival coming in Israel, the revival coming in Egypt. That is what our calling is. Our calling is to bring forth the kingdom. Sometimes we can get so caught up in the politics of everything that's happening that we forget what our true purpose is. Our true purpose is to usher in something incredible. But I'm going to talk now about what God is really trying to restore and what God really, what was really lost. In the garden, Adam and Eve, or Adam, walked with God in the garden. Perfect fellowship. Sin entered into the world. He ate. And all of a sudden, relationship was broken. What happened later was Yeshua had to fix relationship. What I'm telling you today is that God is not interested in religion. If you read in, the, in, in Genesis, here was Adam, and, I mean, um, Abel and, uh, oh, my brain is drawn blank, Cain. Cain brought an offering. That sounds like he was religious. It wasn't accepted. There's a very real understanding of what God's trying to redeem now. And he's trying to restore relationship. We're living in a day and now. We're in the, in the birth pangs of the kingdom. We're in the, in the birth of the kingdom. And we've got to learn a lesson from the Torah. We can't be like the children of Israel saying, Moses, Moses, we know that you hear from God. You go up to the mountain. And you tell us what God says. Now, I really believe what God is trying to do is trying to separate us out into a place where we can hear again so that we can navigate these times so that we are saying, Lord, Lord, would you please tell me what I'm supposed to do today? Who am I supposed to share with today? What am I supposed to do today? The kingdom is coming really, really fast. But it's not going to come until we finish what we're called to do. And our calling is to reach people with this great news of the gospel, that Yeshua came and he died. That he's not trying to establish religion. He's trying to establish relationships. We can have a relationship with a king of kings, <laughs> lord of lords. I mean, that's an awesome thought. That's an awesome thought to be able to, to realize that he wants to speak to us, that he wants to share with us, he wants to live in us. That's crazy. 
He loves us. That's really the message of the gospel. So, Abba, Father, I ask you that you would pour upon this congregation just a fresh outlook of relationship with you. And Abba, Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would pour upon us an out, fresh outpouring of your spirit, that we would just go forth doing what we're called to do, to, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to proclaim that you are truly coming soon as we see all the signs around us. And Father, we praise you, Lord. It's not the end of the world. It's the beginning of the kingdom. <laughs> and as we walk through these turbulent times, I ask you, Father, that you would cast out the spirit of fear. For you are not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. I ask you, Lord, that you would pour this upon every person here. Vashem, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Uh, have you been blessed today by uh, uh, George and Bob Rip? Because she's going to come and do a, a closing song. Uh, but we want to uh, take an, the opportunity to take up an offering for them. Uh, you know, they, they're here as, uh, in part as emissaries from Cocoon, which we have a, a long-term relationship with. And uh, somebody's supposed to bring me a, a basket. Here he comes. So uh, we pray for the offering and then uh, uh, the song, if you feel so led, uh, put it in the basket. Rather, you, if you have an offering for them, go in the basket rather than into one of the, the DACA boxes, okay? Um, Father, you really have blessed us richly this morning. We thank you for the, the beautiful... Uh, music that's been shared that just lift high the name of Yeshua. And Lord, we thank you for the uh, just uh, tremendous teaching and uh, sharing the word of God to give us uh, hope and a future and a hope that we have in you, Lord. Lord, may you continue to equip this body to do the work of ministry each in their own unique ways. Lord, we have a message to share. And uh, pray even right now that uh, you'd give many of us those divine appointments in the days ahead uh, until we gather again next Shabbat to share that hope that's within us, what God has done through Yeshua in our lives. Lord, we thank you for this, this offering. Thank you for the, the givers and the gifts. And we'll praise you. I just want you to also know what you're supporting. Sorry. When, One oh, last thing. Oh. If you want to write a check, write it to, to, to Brit uh, Hadashah, and we'll make the proper transition. Sorry. Man, I want you to know what you're supporting. Our, Because uh, I don't think George talked about it, and neither did I, but our whole ministry in Israel is to Israelis. We have uh, on, uh, on Friday nights, we open our home for the last 15, 16 years, we open our home, I make a big, huge meal, and we invite Israelis to come, and, um, and it's still going on while we're away, and, uh, and then while we're here, we've been going around the country just sort of on a, 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 a mission from the Lord to just go and pray over cities, to just go over and, 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 and gather saints like from our, from our list. We usually get like 25, 30, 40 people who come to uh, the Capitol steps and we just pray and break strongholds in worship. How many know that's a thing? That's like a biblical thing, yeah? Did you know that? Breaking strongholds in worship because, you know, the Lord always sent out the worshipers, right? And I just want to, you know, also encourage you that, you know, you're, you're worshipers, I don't care what anybody's ever told you. If you somebody said you can't sing or you have two left feet and you can't dance or you can't this or you can't that, 
or you can't play. You, you, we were born for this. It's like literally our job to worship the king. It's our job. So I just want to encourage you to worship him all day. I'm just, you know, turn on some worship music, worship him, worship the king. And I didn't even, you know, it's a part of my testimony because I got radically saved. Um, but part of my testimony is I had no idea I could sing like this. And the Lord, like, zapped my vocal cords or something. I don't know. But, I, you know, I, I, I like to sing. I mean, it was okay, you know. But he gave me this voice. And I believe, you know, he gives us gifts, good gifts, each one of us in here. And if you don't know what they are, ask the Lord to reveal them to you. Just ask the Lord. Lord, what, 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 do you, what do you have? What do you, what do you want me to be doing? Because we're here for such a time as this, which incidentally is the name of my ministry. Lazman Hazeh. Can you say that? Lazman Hazeh. And for such a time as this, we're each here. I mean, if God didn't want us here, we wouldn't be here, right? And there's a purpose. We have gifts. And why does he give us gifts? is to draw people into his kingdom. So I encourage you to, I wasn't, didn't even mean to say all this, but you know, ask the Lord. And if you know what your gift is, ask the Lord for creative ways to be using it to draw people to him. Amen? Okay. Well, I just want to um, end with one song that I think you know, and I just think it's funny because Carrie Job came out with this thing and the whole world was like crazy over this thing and they sent their, their uh, language, you know, their translations of it and people from all different nations are singing this song. And I just thought it was funny because the Jews have been singing this for a long time and you guys know what this is. Um, honey, if you want to put it on. This, n yeah, you're putting it on the track. And he's playing. <laughs> but the, the track has drums, so it's nice. Need drums, okay. Um, but this is the blessing from number six. And uh, this is, it's actually written by God himself. And he says, this is the way that you shall bless the children of Israel so that my name will be upon them. Who wants their name? Who wants his name on, upon us? So I, I just, let's just all stand. Can we all stand? And just lift up your hands with me, honey. Are you going to start that thing? You can turn it up. Turn it way up.
give us hope, Lord, in this crazy world we're living in, Lord. I just ask you, Father, to release hope upon your people, God. Release encouragement. Release your gifts, Lord, upon this congregation, Lord. Lord, release newness and freshness of life, Lord. Release your presence, God. And just to be about them, Lord, even as they go from here. Lord, that your presence will just go with them, Lord, and touch everyone that they come in contact with. Lord, and that there would be much fruit from this congregation and uh, from each of us individually. In our families, Lord, we ask you, God, for salvation. Lord, we trust you, God, that you are doing something. You have a plan, Lord, even though we can't see it sometimes. Lord, we just ask you, Father, that you would just encourage us, Lord, your holy presence. Mm -hmm. with us today. I know the service has been a little long, but uh, I think uh, it was a good decision that you made to stay. Praise God. Do you want to share a moment about the uh, display table that we have? Uh, and I just have another announcement. Uh, why don't you sit for one brief moment? Yes. Okay, so a couple of things. You can sign up for our newsletter we send out Monday through Friday with just an encouraging word and uh, and then your prayer points for the day, things that are going on in the news. My husband works very hard on that, and uh, you'll be blessed by it. And, um, and then you can also purchase my music, and we have gifts from Israel, and um, those all... All of those go to our ministry, so it's as if you're giving to our ministry. So I hope it doesn't feel like selling, but um, it, it really all goes to our ministry. You're just getting a bonus. <laughs> but if you do have an issue with it, you don't uh, want to do that, we can always run credit cards tomorrow, and you can leave the item here and pick it up another time of the week if you want. Yeah. You'll be out there after. And I'll be out there, yeah love to talk to you and love for you guys to come to Israel like whenever we get back and uh, we do Israel trips and I'd love to have your congregation come with us looking forward I'll have to get more information about that am I on? am I good? Uh, two other quick announcements uh, Octavio was out in the foyer he's got uh, information sheet about the suicide prevention uh, seminar that will be on August 1st, uh, Sunday afternoon. So please pick one of those up as you, as you leave. And the last thing is about the Orange Mound uh, event. Uh, thank you all for those that have contributed to it. We've had plenty of, of funds. If anyone still wants to, to give toward that that event, which is their next week during their summer uh, theater camp, uh, I would say put it in an envelope in one of the Sadaka boxes and just mark it for the Orange Mound uh, event. Any excess money that we've got, we're, we're just going to hold on to into a designated fund for future activities with Don Gilbert and his uh, uh, Kingdom Community Builders Ministry. She died.
does need Megan does need some help. Uh, I think with the purchase of the food and the preparation of the food, if you're interested in that, uh, let one of uh, let uh, Trey or John and myself know, or contact Megan directly. But this is for next Wednesday. They're doing the lunch. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. All right. Let Let's stand and. Uh, We've sung the blessing. Now I'm going to chant the blessing. Okay, uh, so gather together uh, as you will, friends and family, and uh, receive the ironic benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And so shall you invoke My name on the children of Israel, and I. The Lord will bless them. We proclaim this in that wonderful, awesome name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Tzikenu, Yeshua the Messiah, who is our righteousness, Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. Yivarek Tekadonai V'yishmarecha Yoer Adonai Shalom.